Hey guys, Anthony Fontana here, and in this video, we go over an IRS proposed amount due notice, better known as a CP2000, that we responded to late. So if you missed the deadline on that notice, it is not too late actually to fix this. Yes, maybe the IRS is trying to collect, however, we can still fix the issue. So we do go over how to get that done when you are late. We also go over our response, which is definitely a lot of value in that, regardless if this particular issue doesn't pertain to you and all the notices we got back and forth from the IRS. So you got an IRS CP2000 notice or proposed amount due notice, and you're wondering how to respond, check out the video. All right, so the issue in this case is a little clunky. Stay with me here, okay? The, the taxpayer, my client, actually filled out a W-4 for his, with his personal information, his social, his name, when he wasn't actually the person contracted to do the work. It was a business partner of his and his, and it should have been under his business. So he was issued a 1099 at the end of the year when it actually should have went to his business partner. Well, good thing is that his business partner actually already reported the income on his tax return. So we were able to explain this in our response and ultimately we got this thing down to zero. So let's check it out. All right, so here's the original CP2000 notice that he got. You'll see he got it in November of 19 um, for a 2017 tax year, about two years later. Sounds about right. It's usually what happens for $12,000. Um, and he should have responded by December 4th. You'll see we missed that deadline though, okay? Um, the issue here, which is on page three of this notice, this is like the meat and potatoes here. You'll see explanation of changes. Um, right, non-employee compensation. He got a 1099 miscellaneous. So non-employee means you're a business, 1099, right? Should have filled out a uh, Schedule C, sole proprietorship. He didn't have this on his return, but we know that he did this incorrectly. He knows he did this. Um, it was his mistake, um, but it did go on his business partner's return. So we did end up fixing this. Nonetheless, that's what the original notice shows. And again, right, we missed that December 4th. The next notice that I actually got from him, I know there was one in between here that he just couldn't find, but this is the next one I got from him. You'll see, what is that, almost a year later? Yeah, a year later, we got this next notice here. Um, and this one, they've already made the changes. They assessed the tax. So now he essentially owes this and the IRS is coming after him uh, for this. But nonetheless, you'll see, right, the amount did go up, of course, penalties and interest. So about like 400 bucks over what, two, uh, one year. There. Okay. And this is just saying, Hey, start paying your bill. All right. So how to respond when you're late here. Ideal situation is you still have a copy of the original CP 2000 notice on hand. Um, and that you can just use the instructions on the original CP 2000 notice to, to respond. Either you fax it in or you mail it to the mailing address that they gave and you use the response form that they have. Uh, that is the ideal situation. Now, I do know if they're late, sometimes you'll lose this stuff. And in that case, I highly recommend reaching out to the IRS to find out where exactly to mail this or fax this into because it depends upon where in the country you are, where this will get processed. But I'll show you because thank, thankfully, in this case, we actually had the original CP2000. So I just used you know the response form and did it that way as if we're just responding to this on time. Okay, so uh, this is the response form here. Um, and you'll see, right, we have this address here. But again, it depends where on the country you are, where this needs to go to. Okay, we actually didn't mail it in. We faxed it in, right? They give you the option to fax it right here. So we fax it to that number. But again, I would call. And if you need to call because you don't have the original notice, look at this. We have the is the IRS underreporting department is what this is. This phone number is to and what the CP2000 uh, notice is generated from and who works these cases, okay? So give this number a call. It's 800-829-8310 right there. I'll take a second. And I would call them if you don't have the original notice, okay? So here's our response, okay? We use the response form, pretty straightforward. We say we do not agree, you know, um, and again, we did fax this in there. The IRS is already trying to collect on the taxpayer at this point, so we had to kind of do this quickly. You'll see, right, uh, you'll see in a second when we did this, okay? Yep, he made me the authority here, sign that. Um, there we go, December 20th, 
uh, 21st, sorry, right? He came to me, I think just shortly after this. So about a month turnaround, we got this thing done. Um, and then here is my kind of, I would say template letter that I use when I respond. Okay. You kind of want definitely to, you know, how to address this to the IRS. You put your name, your taxpayer, your social, you know, what year are we referencing this to and the AUR control number. So if you have the original CP2000, you'll find that right here. Okay. You want that on there as well. Um, and then, you know, subject, we're just responding to this. Okay. Taxpayer does not agree with the changes. <laughs> And then we say why. Again, this is a super particular uh, case here that you know may not pertain to a lot of people. I've never seen this before. This is like a first time for me on this one. But uh, maybe if it does, hey, you can kind of use this type of stuff. But nonetheless, it's it's like I'm just using this numbered format. I think it's just like easy for the eyes to kind of just track and 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 you know how chronologically how does this this work um, the steps of of the, you know, how, why we don't, uh, sorry, why we don't agree to the changes. Okay. Um, and then at the end, please, you know, remove the income here. We don't agree to this. Okay. And then we, and then we actually do sign this. I sign this and then the taxpayer signs this as well, but there you go. That's kind of like the format I use. You'll see other videos I upload for CP2000 responses. They're really, really, really similar to that. I also do put the date that we are responding. Um, and actually in this case, since this was late, the IRS is already trying to collect. We actually got on an installment agreement in the meantime, because, uh, they were trying to come after his bank account and we had to stop that. He didn't have that kind of money in there and it would have really put him in a bad situation if they would have took a whole bunch of money out. So we got on an installment agreement and then, you know, we responded to this thing. Okay. All right. Now on to other wonky things that you run into when you respond late here, because the IRS is kind of not set up once you're late and the taxes is already assessed, but you know, our thing kind of, our thing went through the rigmarole here. Okay. We got, we got the runaround essentially, right? We're sending this. So they got, obviously they got the response is what this is saying. And then they're sending us to account management, customer service, and then they're going to contact us in 60 days. So I was like, okay, thank you so much for that. Um, but you'll see May 10th. Um, that was, you know, five months later after we sent in our, our original response there. And then what else did we get? Oh, and then we got another fun letter, right? Saying that, oh, now it's going to a Fresno customer service center. So you do get, and you'll see that. Wow, look at that. Almost, shoot, now we're a year later. Um, this does not turn around quick when we're late here. They're not set up to do this type of stuff. So that's kind of why this is happening here, okay? Um, but ultimately, what did we get? Look at that. They worked it. Okay. We got a zero. So they, they, they adjusted his, you know, underreporting income to zero. It wasn't the 24 that we originally saw shoot over here somewhere. There it is the 24. So they got that 24 down to down to zero with this notice. Jeez. February 10th. When was our response? February 10th of when is that? 2022? About a year and a couple months, right? About a year and a couple months later that this took when we're late, it's a lot faster if you're on time. That's for sure. I have seen that. Okay. And then, you know, ultimately we also got this one. This is like a computer generated, but it's essentially moving all the, um, tax, you know, penalties and interest related to it. Again, 2017, you'll see this is really similar to what this notice here. Yeah, there it is. And this is generated 2022. And this is what, or sorry, that was 2020 and this is 2022. Okay. All right. So just to recap, if you are responding late to an IRS proposed amount, do notice you missed the deadline on that CP2000 notice. Um, it's not the end of the world. It will take time. As we saw from the time that we actually responded till the time that it actually got work and was finished was about a year and two months. Uh, normally, there is a quicker turnaround if you respond on time. Again, none, nonetheless, it's, it's not the end of the world if you do miss the deadline. You do probably get the runaround from the IRS, which can happen. If you don't have the original notice, make sure that you call the number here, that 800 number, okay, to, on, and ask them how to respond here. Um, because, again, it depends upon where in the country you are, where your case is going to get worked, okay? 
There it is, 800-829-8310. So make sure you call that number and use the format. Use the format that I gave there to do the response. Well, I hope the video was helpful for you. If it was, help out our channel, hit that like button. Maybe shoot us a comment if you want us to address any of your issues that you may have. Um, I will be making more videos about these IRS proposed amount due notices that I have worked over the past couple of years uh, within the next week or two. So if this issue didn't pertain to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I will be making more videos with different issues that are actually a little bit more common. Um, Thank you so much.